Hey everyone, Bandit here. You know, if you peruse the Elden Ring lore and theory sections of the interwebs for very long, there's one thing you'll find out for sure. Different people have different opinions. People interpret things differently and debate which interpretation feels better, but one thing that nobody debates is the fact that the lore of this game is in and of itself debatable by nature. Listen, don't hate me for saying it, I'm just the messenger. It's true, if you called Elden Ring's story vague or muddled or confusing, you'd be making an understatement. But this does result in all the awesome Elden Ring theorizing going on all the time. That being said though, and being a part of the theory presence on YouTube myself, I've come to the conclusion that there are several characters or concepts or events that are simply left unanswered in the game. There's just no way around it. And it could be that these questions will be answered in the future by way of story DLC or something like that, which is definitely something that FromSoft is known for, but for now, here are the 10 biggest unsolved mysteries from the game. Please keep in mind that this is not all of them, just the 10 biggest in my opinion, and also, they there be spoilers in the video. You've been warned. The first one is something you see right off the bat in the game, and that is this dead lady sitting right here in front of your character when you spawn into the Lands Between for the very first time. The building itself is called the Chapel of Anticipation, but that doesn't really give us any hints as to what's going on here. We can theorize that this poor murdered lady is most likely a finger maiden, but anything more than that is just speculation. We can talk about whether the grafted scion just ahead was the one who killed this lady, or whether or not she was actually your original finger maiden, and therefore for her death is why you're maidenless, but ultimately every possible detail about her is simply unknown and nowhere to be found yet in the game. Secondly, it is still unanswered as to who really gave you the blessing of grace. Was it Queen Merica or the Greater Will itself? The reason why this is debatable is because we know for a fact that Queen Merica knew the Tarnished would return based on her own dialogue that Melina will dictate to us in the game. But the problem with believing it was Merica outright comes from the timeline. That is to say that Merica knew the Tarnished would return, then Merica banished the Tarnished and removed their grace, then Merica shattered the Elden Ring, then Merica was imprisoned within the Erd Tree, then the Shattering War happened, and then the Tarnished were granted blessings of grace once again. As you can see, since Merica was imprisoned well before the Tarnished were granted grace, and since the Greater Will speaks to the Tarnished via the fingers via Enya, it definitely seems like the Greater Will was the only entity capable of offering its own grace to the Tarnished at this time. But this still doesn't change the fact that it was Merica's plan for this to happen all along, and she was still a goddess according to the Greater Will itself regardless of being imprisoned. So with this question being unconfirmed, we just don't currently know for sure if the Greater Will desperately gave grace to the Tarnished or Merica did according to her own plan. Thirdly, and speaking of Merica and her plans, honestly a lot of her decisions have mysterious motives, but the chief of them all would be the infamous shattering of the Elden Ring, you know, the basis for the entire game. If we're being completely honest, we still do not know for sure why she did it. Ronnie claims that it was because she was grieving over the loss of her son, Godwin. But at the same time, we have proof that the Black Knife assassins were connected directly to Merica, implying the whole assassination thing might have been Merica's plan all along, which conflicts with why she would be feeling grief. We also have proof of Merica discussing the ring's shattering with her husband slash other self before it happened, meaning it wasn't something she did out of an emotional reflex. It was most likely planned. The problem is we don't know exactly exactly what her plan or motives were. So the shattering of the Elden Ring, the namesake of the entire game, surprisingly remains a mystery. Fourthly, and speaking of Merica's hubby slash other self, the huge game changing twist of fate wacky storytelling crazy piece of lore is that Radigan is Merica. And that's confirmed in game directly several times, non-debatable. But what isn't confirmed is whether or not Radigan was always Merica. We know that at one point they were separate beings according to Merica's own words when she tells him directly that he, Radigan, is yet to become her, Merica. Radigan was also off making babies with his first wife, Renala, the enemy of Merica, by the way, while Merica was waging wars with her first husband, Godfrey. So yeah, we know they were separate, but we don't know if Radigan was a separate being in the first place, or was a creation of Merica from her own essence, since she calls Radigan her other self in the same sentence, before their joining. I personally tend to believe the latter, and go into that theory with much more detail in the Merica Explained video, but I'm not too proud to admit that this isn't confirmed in the least. So yeah, mystery number four is that it's not confirmed whether or not Radigan was always Merica or a different individual to begin with, possibly explaining his red hair. Next up is the mystery of what makes an Empyrean an Empyrean, and I can already tell a lot of you are rolling your eyes at this one, but it's true. We've got people, including myself, claiming it must be that an Empyrean is an individual that is pure of god blood, which is why only those born of a quote, single god in game are Empyreans, and therefore fit to 
take the mantle of being the Elden Ring's vessel. But this is far from confirmed, and for proof of that, just look at any post on Reddit or anywhere explaining the nature of an Empyrean or even my own recent videos. The other possible explanation is that an Empyrean is simply an individual that is chosen by an outer god by way of said outer god's two fingers. But of course, that's just speculation. We do know what it means to be an Empyrean, but we're far from having a confirmed answer as to what makes an Empyrean. Number six is another highly debated topic, or should I say another highly debated individual, Rani the Witch. Who is she? How was she born? Why is she an Empyrean? And most importantly, why, oh why, is she so similar to Melina? You're not Finger Maiden with the whole closed tattooed eye thing and the mentions of Torrent and the disappearing out of thin air in blue particle magic. I kid you not, none of these questions are confirmed anywhere in game, except for maybe who she is, since we know she is the daughter of Renala and Radigan. But even so, we don't actually know how she was born, or what her great rune was supposed to be before she threw it away, or the huge can of worms that is who her teacher, the Snow Witch, was, and whether or not the Snow Witch's name was Rena, which is the name that Rani falsely takes on when you first meet her. <sighs> so many questions and absolutely no answers. Number seven is who was the Gloam-Eyed Queen, or the Dusk-Eyed Queen, depending on what item description you're reading. Seriously, who was this lady? We can read that she was an Empyrean, which I'm sure is an absolutely crucial piece of information. If only we knew more about what makes an Empyrean an Empyrean, and we know that she had the Rune of Death at one point, but she was defeated by Malekith, and that was it. That's all we've got on her. She seems like an enormously important character to understanding some pretty big pieces of the history of Elden Ring, like the whole separation of destined death from the world, and the spawning of the Golden Order, but we have next to nothing on her except for a handful of item descriptions. She was the leader of the Godskin Apostles and used the God Slayer Greatsword, so clearly she was no friend of the Greater Will or even Queen Merica since Merica sent her own shadow to kill the Glomide Queen, which he did, but did she just disappear after that? Was she absorbed into the Rune of Death? Is she the Rune of Death, aka Destined Death? Is Destined Death Melina? Is the Glomide Queen Melina? We just don't know, and hopefully the Dusk-Eyed Queen is one of the characters who will get explored more in future DLC because damn it, I need answers. Number eight, who created the Elden Ring? You know, the supernatural relic that governs the lands between and the namesake of the game Elden Ring. Was it the Greater Will? Since we know they sent the Elden Beast, which is the vassal of the Elden Ring, to the lands between in order to enter into and possess Merica, making her the vessel of the Elden Ring? Or was it another outer god predating the Greater Will? We actually have proof in game that an Elden Lord existed long before the Age of the Erd Tree in the form of Fortisax the Ancient Dragon, so does this mean that the Elden Ring and therefore the Elden Lords have always existed, even before the current age of the Greater Will? But that would conflict with the fact that Godfrey is said to be the first Elden Lord in the Age of the Erd Tree. Again, we just don't know. Next up, number nine, hey, we're getting close to the end now, happens at the end of the game, actually. Radigan's whole hostility towards the player tarnished, when you think about it, is quite strange. Quite strange indeed. I mean, if anything, we are to assume that Radigan is on the same side as Merica, right? I mean, he left his first wife to give Merica children and then became her. But not only does he fight against you, who Merica wanted to return to the lands between, he also takes things a step further and closes off the Erd Tree from entering to anyone, which is something that's pretty much confirmed to be Radigan's doing since his symbol is that crisscross pattern that's shown to be sealing the Erdtree's roots from entry. We can see that pattern associated with him in his statues and in his fight and on his scar seal and sore seal talismans. In fact, the pattern is even referred to here as a great rune of the Elden Ring. But if Merica wanted the Tarnished to one day return and battle their way up to the Erdtree and cleanse her body of the Elden Beast controlling her, that means that Merica definitely wanted the Tarnished to enter the roots of the Earth Tree, And since we also know that the Greater Will wanted the Tarnished to reforge the Great Runes back into the Elden Ring, which is something told to us via the fingers via Enya, that means that the Greater Will definitely also wanted the Tarnished to approach the Elden Ring inside the Earth Tree. So both the Greater Will and Merica wanted the Tarnished to enter, but seemingly out of nowhere, Radigan seals us out and also tries to kill us upon our entry. The question we're left with is why? Radigan is called the Leal Hound of the Golden Order by Merica, and his 
his title is Radigan of the Golden Order, so it's heavily implied that his loyalties lie with the Golden Order, which is to say, the vision of the Greater Will. So his prevention of both Merica's and the Greater Will's plans is pretty mysterious to say the least. My personal opinion is that he found out what Merica's plan really was, you know, probably having the Tarnished rid herself of the Elden Beast and therefore the control of the Greater Will, and disagreed with it, wanting to stop the Tarnished from killing the Elden Beast inside his slash her slash their body, which would remove the Greater Will's connection to the world. But of course, that's just my theory. The actual answer isn't explained anywhere in game. Now, before we get to the final and biggest unanswered question of them all, here are a couple honorable mentions because like I said, this game is full of vague storylines with no beginnings or endings. The first honorable mention is an extremely interesting side character known as Nefeli Lo, Warrior. This barbaric lady is clad in the clothing of a champion, which you can also wear if you start off as the hero class. She's the daughter of Sir Gideon the All-Knowing, but you find out later that she's actually not his blood daughter, but instead was simply adopted by the man following her loss of the Guidance of Grace. The champion armor that she wears is said to come from a people who followed their chieftain Hora Lo, you know, Godfrey, the first Elden Lord. <gasps> Gasp! Nefeli Lo? Hora Lo? Daughter without confirmed blood father? Father with several confirmed blood children? Warrior? Warrior? I know, the connections seem uncanny and that's not the end of them either. Nefeli Lo is also inexplicably summonable for the fight against Godfrey slash Hora Lo. So I definitely think they're connected by at least their clan. But whether or not this actually means that Nefeli's real dad was Hora Lo though is a complete mystery. Unconfirmed. But you knew that, otherwise it wouldn't be in this video. The other honorable mention is what is with the three fingers? I mean, seriously. Is there a significance to the fact that three plus two equals five? Does it mean that each outer god has a different kind of fingers? Is there a one finger out there? A four fingers? A five fingers? A six fingers? Who knows, man, who knows? Anyway, at the end of this list, at number 10, the most mysterious mystery of them all is, why was Godwin killed? If there's one event besides the Shattering of the Ring that was responsible for spawning the events of the game and had its hand in every story path that you can take in-game, it would be the cold-blooded murder of Godwin the Golden. We have several reasons to believe that Ronnie was behind his murder, but we also have several reasons to believe that Merica, his own mother, was behind his murder, but we also have several reasons to believe that the Newman women, aka the Black Knife Assassins, acted independently and murdered him by themselves. But why him? What was so special about the firstborn of the demigods, and who himself was not even an Empyrean, that he had to die to Sate some unknown mastermind's plan. And furthermore, why was he killed in the way that he was, with his body being left alive but his soul being erased from existence with the half curse mark carved into him? And then why was he attached to the roots of the great tree which I have recently discovered is not the Erd tree? Who orchestrated his body being used to spread death root throughout the land by way of the roots of the great tree? And why? Why? Would it be so difficult to give us something, anything in regards to answering anything about Godwin's death and curse? Mark? Oh great and noble devs of FromSoft? Once again, all we can do is hope for answers in a future DLC. But for now, that's the end of my list of the top 10 most mysterious unanswered questions in Elden Ring, plus a couple bonuses. What did you think of my list? Do you have the answers to any of these questions, or maybe do you have other questions that you feel need answers in a future DLC? Let me know in the comments below. And also, please leave a like below if you enjoyed the video, or at least my efforts into making the video, and subscribe if you haven't already to stick around for all sorts of gaming videos to come. Huge thanks as always to my bandit crew who make my day every day and are the reason I continue bringing the worlds of video games to your local YouTube screens free of charge. That's all I've got in this one, so as always, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. This is Bandit, looking forward to seeing you next time and signing out. Peace!